identify a couple species in the mustard family. So this is one of them that I've been asked a couple times um, and I thought we could do that together in the Jepson key. The other one is this one here and they're both mustard so it'll be easy to key them out together. Um, this plant is typically found in ex-ag fields and I had it in my garden and this one is found everywhere in urban lots so I thought we, it'd be easy to key up together. Okay, so we use the mustard key, the Brassicaceae key, to key out the plants. And we know that we're in this key because we have a cruciate corolla. That means a corolla that's shaped like a cross. And both of these plants have a perfect example of that cruciate corolla. Another thing is you have either a silique or silical. And this long silique is a typical fruit in the mustard family. Here's another example. And here's an example over here for you of a nice, long, skinny fruit. So that's a silique. And then here's an example of a silical, which are these kind of rounded fruits. Okay, so let's go through the key. We have the option again with just flowering material, and we also have the option with just fruiting material. Let's key out this plant first with just fruiting material. So I have um, purple flowers here. It's a large plant. You can see it extends way beyond a Home Depot bucket. So it's a huge plant again in urban lots. So first we need to know is the fruit a silical or is it a silique? Clearly it is a silique as you can see. It's a long and skinny fruit. Next are the hairs branched or are the hairs simple or zero? So let's look at a leaf together. So you can see here's a leaf and I'm going to zoom in on the leaf and you can see that the hairs are simple. They are not branched whatsoever, okay? So that makes it pretty easy. We're gonna go to hair simple. That brings us to group eight in the key. Plant scapos, call line leaf zero, or plant not scapos, at least one call line leaf present. So basically, a uh, scapos plant just means are the leaves down at the bottom and there's not really leaves extending up the stem. Call line leaf zero means no leaves on the stem. So he's kind of saying the same thing here. Um, so plant not scapos or at least one call line leaf present. So looking at this plant, you guys can see there are leaves all along the stem of this plant. So we know that we have call line leaves present, okay? So we're gonna to go to three and three prime. Plant glandular or plant not glandular? Well, glands are just um, cells that excrete something. And we looked at our leaves and we saw that it has hairs, but not glands. So that would allow us to move on to four and four prime. Fruit indehiscent or is the fruit dehiscent? So an indehiscent fruit is basically a fruit that doesn't have a weakness where it, it can open up. So let's look at our fruit and see if we see a line of dehiscence. So you can see on this fruit, there's basically not, no line of weakness on the fruit. So let's look at an example where you do see that, and that's on our other plant, where you can actually see a line where it's gonna pop open and burst and the seeds are gonna come out. So that's a line of weakness or a line of dehiscence. So our fruit though, which has this like kind of, um, looks like it has little balls on the fruit, does not have that dehiscence. It's an indehiscent fruit. So we're gonna go on to five and five prime. Fruit winged, flat, lanceolate, not segmented, one seeded or is the fruit fruit wing zero? So we don't have any wings. Wings would be coming off of the fruit. They'd be a flattened area coming off of the fruit. And our fruit is more than one seed because you can see there's probably a seed in each of these uh, expansions on the fruit. So we have great, so we know we don't have any wings and we know that we have more than um, one seed. Okay, so that makes it pretty easy. We'll just move on to the next. Six or six prime. Um, we don't have a style right here, so let's just look at the plant, and it's hairy. We know we have tons of hairs, so that brings us to raffinus. So let's look at that raffinus key, and you guys also looked closer at that flower. The flower is really pink. Um, so this one's not as pink as some of the others, but it is really pink, and it gives us that choice. Is it yellow, or is it purple or pink? Um, we clearly have that. Usually you want to read the whole couplet through, 
but um, we're just going to save some time and that keys right to Raphinus sativus. So that's why we know this is Raphinus sativus, a plant commonly found in urban lots all over. Okay, so let's move on to our next plant. So we're not going to be in fruiting material this time. We're going to go into flowering material to go through another section of the Brassicaceae key. Okay, so let's key out this plant. Again, commonly found in X ag lots. Okay, look at those leaves, okay? Okay, so are the hairs simple or zero, or at least some hairs branched? So looking at this, this is simple hairs, again, um, on this plant. So the hairs look really similar to the other hairs that we looked at. They're not branching. So again, simple hairs. And then colline leaves zero, or at least some basally lobed or clasping, or colline leaves always present, not basally lobed or clasping. Okay, so as you can see, colline leaves are just having leaves on the stem, and we clearly have leaves on our stem. So that makes it really easy to identify. Okay, so colline leaves are present. So that brings us to group two. So moving on to group two, we are right here in group two. Oh, wait, did I do I just hold on? Colline leaves always present, basally lobed or clasping, group two. Okay, flowers bilateral or flowers radial. Okay, so uh, these are classic examples of a radial flower. They're like perfect examples of a radial flower. Uh, bilateral flower is a flower like this, and this is Iberis, and I have this in my garden. You can see that the top two petals of the flower are shorter and the bottom petals are much longer. So this is a great example of a bilateral flower on Iberus, especially down here at the base, you can see that. So much longer down at the bottom and then shorter at the top is a bilateral flower. Okay, so there's Iberus, they're called the candy tufts. Right here, bilateral Iberus and Streptanthus do that. Okay, so we have a radial flower. Stamens two to four, or are the stamens six? And I pulled the plant apart to see the stamens inside. And here you can see it has six stamens and they're actually different sizes. They're just falling off the plant here. So, but there are six of them. Um, there's one over here. Um, so that's six stamens. Okay, let's move on to the next section. So we got six stamens. Um, and it's asking the ovary size, is it round, or the shape of the ovary, is it round, or is it linear? And we know this plant has a linear ovary, so that, that's basically um, the acelic. Again, colline leaves compound, or are the colline leaves simple? So these are just simple leaves. They're not compound leaves. Even though these have some nice lobes to them, they're not a compound leaf. Okay, so plant... Um, Colline leaves are simple, off, occasionally shallowly divided, so I would just definitely describe it as that. Plant with multicellular stocked glands or gland zero. There's no glands on this plant, just some hairs. Uh, stamens plus or minus equal in length, well exerted beyond the petals, or all flower parts spreading, or are the stamens not that case? So, so these stamens, they end right here. They don't exert beyond the petal. Here's the end of the petal. You don't see the stamen coming way out here, clearly. So the stamens are stopping way before the end of the petal. So that makes it an easy identification there, or easy to identify, okay? So now stamens in three pairs of unequal length, or are the stamens four long, too short? And mine were four long, too short even though they're kind of falling apart, so it's hard to see. And then the last step is petals dark veined. And you can see the petals, they're dark veined here, so that makes it pretty easy to identify. Or are the petals not dark veined? So they are. Um, next step is, is it an annual, generally hairy, leaves generally pinnately lobed? Or are they, um, let's see, hold on. Uh, flower or sorry petals dark veined oh is it a perennial or subshrub glabrous leaves entire to dentate that would bring us to that or we want to follow to 26 prime um, annual generally hairy leaves generally pinnately lobed so um, we have an annual and it has lots of hairs okay so somewhat pinnately lobed I guess it could be um, here's some lobing 
on this leaf, for example. Fruit corky, indehiscent, lower segment, rudimentary, seedless. So that brings us to raffinous, and raffinous is an example of a corky fruit. Um, and then fruit not corky, indehiscent, lower segment, well-developed, and seeded. Um, so that's our, our example of our fruit because we don't have a, a corky fruit. And then um, fruit valve three-veined or fruit valve one-veined. Terminal segment seedless. So this is an example. Here's the terminal segment. This is the beak. On the beak, there are no seeds, so it's seedless on the beak. Okay, so then that keys to Euchara. Okay, so we're gonna go to that key and see what we can key out. And there's only one, it's uh, Euchara or Erica vesicaria. So it's garden rocket or arugula. So that's the plant that we commonly have, arugula and these X egg lands. And I see it all the time um, being asked to identify this species. So um, here's our arugula. Here's our raffinus sativus, our wild radish. And here's some iberis, which I happen to have in my garden. And um, I hope that helps us get through the key and brassicaceae. Maybe we can key out some more together soon.